The objective of this lesson is to dive in a little deeper into the Revit interface. We'll explore the ribbon a little more, look at the quick access toolbar, and pick apart how Revit likes to pick apart a wall. As I mentioned before, we aren't in CAD anymore. For some people, this is no big deal. For others, it's the difference between being on Earth and being on Mars. But once you see how Revit operates, it'll seem a little more like home. Open the file you previously saved, or open the file called Chapter 1, and let's follow along. Let's start again at the ribbon. Notice the Architecture tab. This is where this class is going to be about 90% of the time. There's other tabs for other trades, such as Structure. We'll be on the Structure tab in one chapter. Systems. This is for MEP. We won't go near this tab. But we'll definitely use the Insert tab, the Annotate tab, the Analyze tab, Massing and Site, Collaborate, View, Manage, and Modify. What's nice about these tabs is they interact with you. Also, just above these tabs is what's called the Quick Access Toolbar. If you find that you're using a command a lot, such as Restore Backup, you can right-click on it and add it to the Quick Access Toolbar. Hopefully, you're not restoring backups that much to have quick access to that button. We also have other choices on the Quick Access Toolbar, too. You can add the New button, Open, Save, Sync, or you can take some stuff off. You have full access to the Quick Access Toolbar. Moving over to the right, what we have is a search box. You can type in a keyword or phrase and search on it, and then Revit gives you some help. Next is the Subscription Center. If you subscribe, you can go to this. After that, we have Communication Center. Little pop-ups will appear if there's new updates. Favorites. You can actually sign in to what's called Exchange Apps, or Autodesk Exchange. It's a fantastic site for getting model components from vendors. Then next, we have the good old-fashioned Help. If you click the drop-down and just go to Help or hit F1, you'll be brought to the Autodesk website. It's a lot of help involved. You almost don't even need these tutorials. Now, let's look at some properties. If you could, go to the Architecture tab and click the Wall button. We see that the interface changes to aid you in the placement of this wall. Also, it brings up a Properties dialog. In this Properties dialog, we have what's called a Type Selector drop-down. Go ahead and click this little arrow, and you see all the walls that are loaded into Revit. Select exterior brick and CMU on metal stud. Now what's going to happen is, once we place this wall, all of these variables here help you with the single wall that you're placing. Go ahead and click the Edit Type button. In the Edit Type, the parameters here are called Type Parameters. That means if we had 100 of these walls in the model and we change one of these parameters, every 100 wall would change. Click on the Edit button next to the Structure row. We'll see how a wall is put together. There's a lot of layers involved. If you move your cursor over to the side, we can widen out this field. You can see that a wall is made up of finishes, thermal air layers, membranes, substrates, and structures. There's a lot to a wall in Revit. Also, we can get a preview of the wall by hitting the Preview button down here. You get a preview in Plan, or if you hit the View drop-down, you can go to Section, Modify Type Attributes. Once you've examined your wall, click OK. Click OK again. Let's take a look at some of the other options. Let's look at our Options Toolbar, Modify Place Wall. It gives us the height and wants to know if we want the height connected. We can leave it unconnected now at 20 feet. We want to make sure it's set to Finish Face Exterior. We're drawing an exterior wall, so we want to make sure that we're setting it up for a brick coursing. An error here could be costly down the road. Make sure you turn the Chain button on. What that means is if we draw one wall, another wall will start to form and follow our cursor around. Let's keep it at a zero offset. Notice we have the Modify Place Wall Temporary tab that shows up. We have some choices to draft with. We want to make sure the Line button is the current choice. What I'd like you to do is move your cursor down into this area, somewhere down here. Doesn't matter, we'll make some adjustments later. Pick the first point and move your cursor in this direction. Notice that we have a little tooltip following along with the increment. Move your cursor to the left until that says 100 feet. Or, what I do is I just type in 100 and hit Enter. Because our Chain button is selected, we can now keep continuing with this wall. So let's go straight up, and let's type in 80. Notice that I don't have to type in the foot mark or the inch mark. Revit understands input to be feet. This will be hard if you go back to AutoCAD. Move your crossers this way. Notice that there's no what's called an ortho. Revit will snap to the direction you want to go in. So if you keep coming in this direction, notice that Revit will align itself with adjacent geometry. This is a nice function. 
Either let Revit track the wall below it or type in 100 feet. Bring your cursor down in this direction and type in 16 and hit enter. Move your cursor in this direction, type in 16 and hit enter. To get out of the command, press escape a couple times. Awesome. We now see how to interact with Revit. It's as if there's layer upon layer in terms of object properties and commands within commands. Luckily, it's laid out in a logical format. We were able to examine a wall's properties and place that wall in the drawing window.